Pojo. Welcome to Washington Education Center's radio Zoom classes. This is MBF3C, grade 11 college math, and I'm the teacher, Bronwyn Slade. If you would like to participate live today, you can call the WASA studio at 1-800-465-7144 or 737-4017. You can listen on the radio at 91.9 FM and also on the television at Bell Express View channel 972. You are always welcome to join me live through the Zoom link, which is available both for me, your teacher, and also your DEC. Our classes are scheduled Monday through Thursday from 10 until 11 in the morning. And we are in our fifth week of our nine week course. You should definitely be submitting work at this point. So a reminder that the support questions, the ones with the pencil icon are not for marking. You can decide which ones and how many of these to do. It's great to do them all, but if you're really understanding a concept, it is okay to skip questions. You don't have to do them all just because they're there. The answers are in the back of your book. So please check your work. This way you know if you're on the right track or if you need more practice. The key questions, the ones with the little key icon are the marked questions. So these ones, you need to do all of the questions. You need to show all of your work, your steps and your thinking. This way I can understand what it is that you understand. And if you are struggling with something, then I have more information to help support you to improve. So how do you submit your work for marking? There's three methods. The first is to scan your work and send it electronically. If you have a device, you can scan with that device. The Apple devices have a Notes app and the Android devices have a Google Drive app. These are fairly straightforward point and cl click scan functions. But if you need some support on my uh, YouTube channel, there are tech tutorials that will walk you through step-by-step -step how to do this. You can just send pictures if that's the best for you, but scanning means that the files are smaller and a little bit easier to send. So if that can work, that's great. Then you can send them to me through email to studentwork at nnec.on.ca and cc it to me, bronwyn.slate at nnec.on.ca. Or you can also send it to me through Facebook Messenger where my name is bslatewasa. The second method is to drop your work off in Sioux Lookout. We have a white mailbox next to our side entrance and with a bright red building next to the post office. The third method is to hand your work into your DEC. Your DEC can either send your work through the express or fax it to 807-737-1732 or toll free fax to 1-800-463-7852. Students can also send their work in by fax just let us know that it's coming because sometimes things can get lost in the shovel. If you'd like to connect with me through social media, both my Facebook and my YouTube channel are under the name B Slate Wasa. All of our radio Zoom classes are recorded and I upload them shortly after broadcasting every day. So you can find them all there and replay things or slow things down if, as needed. Also, you can access some short videos that I've made that explain common errors and confusing concepts. So if you are struggling with something, that's a good place to go and check out first before you do a general internet search. Math is a really visual subject. So I strongly encourage you to access your, access the videos. So either joining me live through Zoom, you don't have to talk to me, you can just watch, that's fine. Or watch the replays on YouTube are both, these are both great options. If neither of these work for you, if you let me know, then I can send you a copy of the recordings so you still get the complete experience and set yourself up for success. So if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out and connect with me. You can send me an email at bronwyn.slate at nnec.on.ca. You can connect with me through Facebook where my name is B. Slate Wasa. Give me a call at the office at 807-737-1488, extension 2209 or toll-free 1-800-667-3703. My office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., though I teach from 9 until 11, so that it's not a good time to try to get a hold of me. We are starting Unit 3 today. So first, we are looking at Lesson 11, which is trigonometric ratios. This lesson, I'm breaking into two parts, as there is a lot uh, in this lesson, it should be review from previous 
gears, but if it isn't something that you remember, uh, I'm breaking it up into two lessons in order to really make sure we get to all the details. So our learning goals are that at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to recognize and label the parts of a right triangle. You will understand how to use trigonometric ratios to find unknown sides and interior angles of right angle triangles. Today's lesson, we're gonna focus on finding unknown sides. And then in a follow-up lesson, we will focus on finding the interior angles of a right triangle. So you know that you can do this because you can identify the opposite and adjacent sides, as well as the hypotenuse side. You can solve the unknown sides using trig ratios, and you can solve the unknown angles using trig ratios. Once again, focusing on that one and two success criteria today. And in a future lesson, we will be focusing on three and reviewing one and two there. So when we'll use this in real life? Well, we're strengthening our comfort with numbers. Trigonometry is something that shows up in various places in people's lives, but not in everyone's lives. But being able to be comfortable with numbers and manipulate numbers is something that everyone will have to do one way or another. So this is important to be able to be comfortable with numbers. But first, let's activate our brain with some mental math. I don't believe in mad math minutes. They cause stress and anxiety and focus on speed and memorization opposed to actually deep understanding and conceptual development. So we don't do that. Instead, in our class, we focus on developing strategies that are based on friendly numbers and individual confidence so that we each can build skills that we need. Our question today is 48 plus 673. We're going to be using the strategy of adding up in chunks. This is one that I like to visualize on a number line. You, of course, don't have to, but you can. And so we're gonna start at 48, which is our beginning number. And we are adding 673. Of course, you could start at 673 and add 48 to it. Either way is totally fine. Um, adding is what's called commutative, which means you can do it in either order and it still is going to be the same. But I'm gonna add up in chunks. So I'm gonna add up in friendly chunks to get to add these two numbers together. So 48, I'm going to add 2 to get to 50, because that's a friendlier number than 48 is. And now from 50, well, I can just add 600, because I know that 50 plus 600 is going to be 650. So I could add that in smaller chunks, or you can add big chunks. Again, whatever is friendliest for you. So now I see, well, I can add another 50 to get me to 700. So, so far I've added 652, then I need to add 673. So if I add another 20, now I've added 672. So 20 to 700 is 720. And now I just need to add one more to add 673, which means I'm at 721. So this is a great strategy because really you can use whatever friendly numbers. You don't have to do it in this order. You could have done it in a different order. Uh, you could use different friendly numbers. Really, you figure out what is best for you. And that's what I really like about this strategy. All right, mine's on. Let's do a little bit of prior learning review before we dive into these new concepts. So I just wanted to do a little bit of review about triangles when we're talking about trigonometry. A right angle equals 90 degrees. And the symbol for that is this little square in a corner of a triangle. If you are drawing it and you don't, drop perfectly that is okay if you indicate it with the this little square um, symbol then we know that it's a right angle even if it's not perfect because you are not a computer that's totally fine if it doesn't have that indicator it is not a 90 degree angle so even if this one looks like it could be a 90 degree angle it looks pretty right angle to me but there's no indicator 
that means that it is not a 90 degree angle. So we cannot assume that it is just because it looks like it. It could be 89 degrees, it could not be 91 degrees. Basically, that is not the, without the symbol, we're saying that it's not 90 degrees. So that is something to remember when you're drawing or when you're interpreting information. There's no right angle symbol. It's not a right angle, whether or not it looks like it's one. Then we also need to remember a little bit about proportionate proportions and ratios. So being proportion means that two ratios or fractions are of equal value. So this is commonly a uh, ratio is comparison, comparison of two values of the same kind. So a part to part ratio compares a number of parts of a whole to a number of parts in the whole or a part whole ratio compares the number of parts in a whole to the total of all the parts in the whole. And ratio can have more than two terms. So for example, looking here, we have one over two, one half equals X over 50. So we're saying that these two proportions, these two ratios are equal. So that means that one over half, we can think of, well, 25 over 50 is equal to a half as well. So that means that X has to equal 25 in this situation because those are two equivalent ratios. And so the only way for them to be equivalent is if X is equal to 25. So here, if I have another one, I have one third is equal to 65 over Y. This one, I don't know as uh, easily in my head. I don't know, whereas here I knew that 25 over 50 was equal to one half, but I can think of, well, okay, to get from the equivalent ratio, I have to multiply the same thing to the top and the bottom in order to uh, be only multiplying by one and therefore not really changing my number. So if I multiply both the top and the bottom by 65, because one times 65 is 65, so that this ratio is 65 times as big as this ratio in terms of the numbers, but the ratio is still the same. So we have to do three times 65. Well, three times 65, if I do three times 60, that's 180. If I do three times five, that's 15. So 180 plus five is equal to 195. So y has to equal 195 in order for this ratio to be equal. Here I have y equals, sorry, no y. I have four fifths is equal to a over 25, which is equal to 32 over b. So what this is saying is that all three of these ratios are the same. They're all equivalent. So I can compare them to each other. If I just were to compare a over 25 is equal to 32 over B. I don't have enough information. I can't figure out what those ratios are because I have two variables and only two ratios. I need this third ratio here in order to figure out either of my other two ratios. So the same ideas I can think of, well, the relationship between five and 25, I've multiplied it by 25, or sorry, by five. So I have to multiply this by five as well, in order to think about to get an equivalent ratio. So four times five is 20. So A equals 20. Then here, if I'm trying to figure out B, the best idea, I can use my, this new ratio that I figured out. But if I made a mistake here, then I'm gonna make a mistake here. So it is best to go back and go from the original information that is given to us. So we're gonna say, well, four times eight gives us 32. So five times eight gives us B. So that means that B is equal to 40. And so four fifths is equal to 20 over 25, which is equal to 32 over 40. Those are all the same. They're all equivalent ratios. They're all in proportion. So this is just something that we need to use throughout uh, this lesson with trigonometry. So it's important to remember uh, how do we use those 
ratios. Okay, what new concepts do we need today? As I said, trigonometry is something that is used in various places. Uh, we in schools only see it as random triangles and we don't necessarily see the applications in lots of places, but places where it shows up are in surveys. So when you see people along roads who are measuring distance and things like that, so they are surveying, they're using trigonometry, their machines are using trigonometry and that's how they're measuring information. In video game design, there is lots of trigonometry uh, parts in that, in the coding and in the video games. So here's Angry Birds and making the shot has trigonometry within it, but also just in terms of how that design and how the everything functions, part of that is trigonometry defines that. In forensics, criminal forensics, they're the blood spatter patterns uh, use actually use trigonometry in order to gather that information that will then be used to analyze and inform criminologists and police officers, detectives in terms of figuring out information gathered from blood spatter patterns. So that's not necessarily where you think trigonometry shows up, but it is. And then also in terms of space and measurements of things within space, distances, and satellites, things like that, uh, trigonometry plays a big role there as well. So though you may not be an astronaut or an engineer, these things, their trigonometry is a place that shows up in lots of different ways that we might not expect. All right, so first we're just gonna define what we're talking about. So trigonometric ratios, are the ratios of any two sides of a right angle triangle in terms of the reference angle. These are called sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, and they can be used to find the unknown sides and angles. So the basis of this idea is that it doesn't matter how big or smaller object, the relationships is still the same. So if we, here we're looking at not a triangle, but here we're looking at the Wasa Distance Education Center's logo so that you can understand what it is that we're talking about once we start looking at the triangles. So here we have a logo that takes up most of my screen. And if I scale it, if I zoom into it, or if I make it bigger, I haven't changed the relationships, the proportions within this logo. It still looks the same. It looks like we're closer. We can see maybe more detail. We've zoomed in so we can see maybe our, our font isn't quite as crisp or whatever, but it still looks the same. We just, it's just been enlarged. The same idea is if I shrink it, it still looks the same. It isn't skewed in any way. All of my relationships are still the same. It's just now that it is smaller. This is what we're talking about when we're scaling an object is that we're getting bigger or smaller but the proportions, the ratios, the relationship of the distances between places is still the same. It's just closer or farther. If instead of scaling it, if we skew it, these are examples of where our ratios are not the same. So we still have the logo. We can still tell us the logo, but it doesn't look the same. So it looks squashed. It looks like we've stretched it in one direction or another, but our logo you can tell that the logo looks different. Yes, again, you can still recognize it, but it doesn't look right. It looks like it has been sheared or squashed. And this is because our relationships or proportions are not equivalent. So they haven't done, There's the things are different. You can tell that the distance between places are different. The angles between things are different. And this has changed the way that our logo looks. So that's what we're talking about when we are going to dive into this is that our, when we're talking about our relationships is that we're talking about our relationships are the same. It doesn't matter if we're bigger or smaller, but our relationships are the same. The triangles are going to be the same, just like the logo is the same, whether or not we zoom in or out. We're not skewing it. We're not squishing it. We're just getting closer or farther away. So these are called similar triangles when we look at triangles. And so here we have a triangle, for example, which has a right angle triangle, which is what we're talking about today. 
and it has one angle is 58 degrees and one angle is 32 degrees. And then we label our sides A, B, and C. So a similar triangle is that here, this blue triangle, which is has the same angles, right angle triangle, 58 degrees, 32 degrees. Now my sides are R, S, and T. This triangle is smaller. So my lengths of R, S, and T, the lengths are less, but our triangles still look the same. It just looks like this is smaller. We're zoomed out on that one. Similarly, this green triangle still has the right angle triangle, an angle 58 degrees, an angle 32 degrees. So our angles are the same. The actual length of X, Y, and Z are going to be different, but our triangle relationships are still going to be the same because we're just zoomed in. This is just a bigger version of the same triangle. So these are what are called similar triangles because they are all are, they're just zoomed in and out versions of the same triangle. The actual distance is going to be different, but the relationships are going to be the same. So the ratio of A to B is the same as the ratio of X to Y, which is the same as the ratio of R to S, because those relationships are still the same. Doesn't matter if we're zoomed in or zoomed out, those relationships are going to stay the same. They're still in proportion, even though. Some are bigger than others. We can also write this. We can write ratios with the semicolon, or we can write ratios, no, sorry, with the colon, not semicolon, with the colon, or we can write ratios in this fraction mode where it's A over B is equal to X over Y, which is equal to R over S. And the same with, if we compare two other sides, if we compare B to C, Y to Z, and S to T, again, those are the same sides that we're comparing. So those are also the same relationships. Those ratios are also the same. In the same way that if we compare C to A, Z to X, and T to R, those relationships are also the same. And we can say them both with the colon or with the in the fraction mode. Those relationships are all the same. It doesn't matter. So that's what we're taking away from similar triangles is that these relationships are all the same whether or not we're in a bigger triangle or a smaller triangle. All right, so now we're going to apply that with a little bit more detail. So we're going to look at the sine ratio, which is on page two of your IL booklet. So I've given you a little bit of background knowledge beforehand. Your booklet just go, dives right in and just gives you a bunch of rules. I'm going to try to explain to you the why a little bit in more detail. So. With the sine ratio, we're going to look at two, we're going to look at a triangle. We're looking at right angle triangles. As you can see, we have right angle triangles. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side, which is across from the right angle triangle. By definition, that is what the hypotenuse is called. It is a side that is the longest side in a triangle that is a right angle triangle. And this longest side is always found across from the right angle. It's not touching the right angle. It is the side that doesn't touch the right angle, which is across. So the reference angle is the important angle in the situation. This needs to be defined in some way in your question. So the reference angle isn't always the same angle. It isn't always the same position. It's gonna be defined depending on the situation that you're talking about, whether or not it is just a generic triangle and they're indicated in some way like with a letter or with a line, but your reference angle has to be told to you in some way. The reference angle is never the right angle. Never, ever, ever. The right angle is always a 90 degree angle. It's always the right angle. The reference angle is always one of the other two angles. Then the opposite side is always the side that is opposite the right angle. The reference angle, sorry, not the right angle. My bad, let me say that again. The opposite is always across opposite the reference angle. So I like to label my opposite as OPP. Uh, you can write the full word opposite. You can just write O. I like to write OPP. It's just my way. Uh, same with hypotenuse. I write the first two letters, three letters, HYP for hypotenuse. I still say the whole word, but those are the symbols that I write. So the sign of an angle, of your reference angle, is the relationship between the length of the side opposite angle A and the length of the hypotenuse side. So that is how sine is defined. 
it's defined as the relationship between the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. That ratio is how sine is defined. Scientists or mathematicians noticed that there was a pattern that this ratio was consistent. And so they gave it a name. They called it sine. I don't know why they called it sine, but they did. So we say sine A, you could you rewrite sine S-I-N for that's the, what's going to be on your calculator. And for short form, we still say sine. You can say sin. I said sin as a high school student, but you can I still say sine now is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that is what our ratio is. I like to write it as S-I-N of A. So sine A is equal to OPP over HYP. That's my shorthand that I like to write. Some folks like to remember this as saw, S-O-H, and that's how they remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That is a useful tool for some folks, not for all folks. You decide what is best for you. Okay, so then how do we actually use this information? So this is on page four of your IL booklet. <laughs> so first we're gonna look at how to find the side length. That's what we're focusing today. So for number one, we're gonna solve for X. You have a triangle that has a right angle triangle. You have an angle P, which is 17 degrees. So that's our reference angle. We have a side length X and we have the hypotenuse side is 13.2 centimeters. That's what's given. So first we're gonna label our sides. We're gonna find our reference angle, which is P. And we're gonna say, okay, the side opposite our reference angle is the X side. I'm gonna label that as OPP, my opposite side. And then I'm gonna label my hypotenuse, HYP, my hypotenuse, which is across from the right angle. Now I know that sine P is equal to OPP opposite over hypotenuse. I like to write out my rule at the beginning so that I know that I'm using the right thing. And if I make a mistake, then me as a teacher can tell that I'm where you've made the mistake. So then I just substitute in the information I know. So my angle P is 17 degrees. So sine 17 degrees is equal to X <clears throat> over 13.2 centimeters. So now I'm going to use algebra. I'm going to multiply both sides by 13.2 in order to isolate for X, which cancels off 13.2 in the side with the X which leaves me with X is equal to 13.2 times sine 17. Now, <clears throat> when you look on your calculator, the button that you need for sine is generally S-I-N, and you just press that. Now, depending on your calculator, sometimes you need to press the angle first. You press 17, then sine. Other ones, you press sine, then 17. You need to figure out your calculator and how it works. And if you need some help with that, let me know and I have to, we can talk about it to figure it out. But all calculators are different. I can't tell you which way it's gonna be. So then we do sine 17, which is 0 0.29237. It's actually a much longer decimal. You wanna round it to at least, if you're writing it down, round it to at least five decimal places. So that times 13.2. It gives us that X equals 3.9 centimeters. And that's how we figure out this <clears throat> length. Another thing to remember is that your calculator must be in degrees. It must say DEG up on the top of the screen. If it doesn't, if it says RAD or GRAD, that is the wrong unit of measurement and therefore you're gonna get the wrong answer your calculator has to be in degrees. If it isn't in degrees, if it says RAD or GRAD, you need to press this button that says DRG until it says degrees. Generally, if you do that, then it will stay in degrees, um, but that you need to make sure that your calculator is in degrees. This is super, super important, or you're just gonna always get the wrong answer. It's like if we were measuring something in centimeters, but you always, you're using a ruler that was in inches, then it would always be wrong because you're using the wrong units. 
<clears throat> okay, so another example of signing, finding for side length. We have a triangle here that has a reference angle of T, which is 64 degrees. We have a side length of Y and a side length of 58.1 centimeters. So again, we're going to label our sides here. Our opposite side this time is 58.1 centimeters. Our hypotenuse is Y, is our unknown we're trying to find. And so again, we say sine T is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine 64 degrees is equal to 58.1 over Y. We're substituting in what we know. We need to solve for Y, so we need to isolate. <clears throat> this is tricky because Y is on the bottom. So we need Y to be on the top. Otherwise, we're saying one over Y, and that is not the same thing. So we're going to multiply both sides by Y in order to get it so that it's on the top and not on the bottom. We're not dividing by Y. So then we have Y sine 64 equals 58.1. So we're going to divide both sides by sine 64 to cancel that off. So we end up with Y equals 58.1 divided by sine 64. Over time, you're going to get used to doing this. And so it's not you're not going to think so hard in terms of the algebra. If you need to do all the steps in order to keep yourself organized, go for it. If you don't, uh, that's okay at this point, as long as you are getting to the right place. If you are not, if you're just jumping in and you get to the wrong place, then I might ask you to do the steps. And show me the steps so we can figure out why you're getting to the wrong place. So then that, maybe you just put that all into your calculator and you get y is equal to 64.4 centimeters. <clears throat> our y is our hypotenuse, so we would expect our hypotenuse to be longer than our opposite because we know that our hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So it is, so that makes sense to us. Again, you're gonna have to use your sign button and your calculator has to be in degrees. This is always true for when we're doing trigonometry. So now you can do the support questions on page four, questions one through four. We're gonna solve for the unknown angles in our next lesson. So you can only do the ones that are for solving for the unknown sides. I'm gonna focus on solving for the unknown Sides in this lesson, we're going to look at sine, cosine, and tangent. And then in our next lesson, we're just going to focus on the unknown angles for each of those three ratios as well. So now we're going to look at the cosine ratio. This is on page seven, or I'll look at it. So still looking at our right angle triangles. Our hypotenuse is always the longest side, which is across from the right angle. That is still true. That hasn't changed, even though we're now looking at cosine ratio. Our reference angle is still the important angle in the situation, and it's still not the right angle. It has to tell you that is still true. What is different is that now we're going to be looking at, we're going to define our adjacent side, which is always next or adjacent to the reference angle. So this side that is beside the reference angle is called the adjacent angle. That is what's new when we're looking at cosine. So the cosine ratio is defined as cos A equals the length of side adjacent angle divided by the length of the side of the hypotenuse side. That is the relationship. So again, this is a definition that mathematicians have noticed that is something that is consistent. And so the cos A is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And that ratio is always true. I like to write it as cos A. So cos A is equal to ADJ divided by HYP. Again, I say the full words, but I write the short forms. And some folks like to remember this as CA which is C-A-H, cos, adjacent, hypotenuse. That works for them. All right, so then how do we use that to find the side length? So we have a right angle triangle. We have a reference angle of Q, which is 53 degrees. We have one side K and one side 72.8 millimeters. So we're going to label our sides. That's the first thing. We see that our side K is our adjacent side. And our side 72.8 is our hypotenuse side. So because we have our adjacent and our hypotenuse, we know that we're talking about the ratio of cosine. So cosine of Q is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. We fill in the information that we know. So cos 53 is equal to K over 72.8. We isolate for K. 
So we end up with K is equal to 72.8 times cosine of 53. Our button for our cosine on our calculator is cos, C-O-S. Uh, it should be right next to your sine button on your calculator. So we press that and we get number. Again, rounding to four or five decimal places is your best bet. So we find out that K is equal to 43.8 millimeters. It is smaller than 72.8, which is what we expected. Your calculator still needs to be in degrees. This is still true. I'm going to just keep saying it so that it helps you remember. All right, so if we have another triangle, we're solving for Z this time. We have a right angle triangle with a reference angle of 40 at W. We have a side that is Z and we have a side that is 29.4 centimeters. We label our sides. You, we have to label our sides first to know which ratio we're talking about. Our adjacent is 29.4, our hypotenuse is Z. Then we know that we have adjacent hypotenuse. So we have our, we're talking about the ratio cosine of W equals adjacent over hypotenuse. We fill in our substitute in our values. Cos 40 equals 29.4 divided by Z. Again, we need to isolate for Z. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to have to do some algebra in order to rearrange to isolate for Z. Once we do that, we end up with Z is equal to 29.4 divided by cosine 40. If you need practice doing just the algebra, let me know. We can talk with that practice. I am assuming that, that you're comfortable with that. That's not what we're focusing on. That's not what we're learning. So if you need support with that, that is something separate that I can support you with. So that Z is equal to 38.4 centimeters once you do the calculation on your calculator. That is our hypotenuse. We expect it to be longer than our adjacent side, which it is. So that makes sense to us. All right, so now you can support questions on page nine, questions eight through 11. Again, we are solving for the unknown angles in our next lesson. So we'll come back and do the support questions for that in our next lesson. And finally, we're gonna look at the tangent ratio. This is on page 12 of your ILO booklet. So we still have a right angle triangle. So that's still what we're talking about. Our reference angle is still the important angle in the situation, and it's still never the right angle triangle in the triangle. That is still true. Now we're looking at the opposite, which is still across from our reference angle, and our adjacent, which is next to our reference angle. So that, this time, tangent is, compares, is the comparison between the length of the side opposite angle A and the length of the side adjacent to your angle A, your reference angle. So tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. That is the ratio that we are comparing. So I like to write that as TAN of A equals OPP over ADJ. That is my short form that I like to write it. Again, I still say tan. I say tan, I don't say tangent, just to be consistent. Uh, tan A is equal to opposite over adjacent. For some other folks, they like to remember the TOA, TOA is what they say. And that's how they like to remember it. So that's how we use that to find the side length. So solving for G, we have a right angle triangle, reference angle of 74 degrees at F, side G, and a side 17.3 millimeters. Still, label our triangle. G is our opposite side. 17.3 millimeters is our adjacent side. So we're going to use tan F is equal to opposite over adjacent. Tan 74 degrees is equal to G over 17.3. Again, we need to isolate for G. We do that using algebra. We get G is equal to 17.3 times tan of 74. We use our calculator button for tangent, which is TAN, which is going to be beside cos, most likely on your calculator. Again, you're going to round this to four or five decimal places. This time you see that our tangent ratio is such that we, it's not zero point something, it's three point something. That is fine, that is normal, uh, but something that is different. So G equals 60.3 millimeters in this example. 
Your calculator still used to be in degrees. If it's not, press the DRG button until it says degrees. Another last triangle, we have a right angle triangle, reference angle of 20 degrees at J, side length D and side length six. We see that the sixth side length is the opposite. The adjacent side length is the D. So we know that we have tangent because we have opposite over adjacent. So tan 20 is equal to six over D. We're gonna use the algebra to isolate for D. We do that until we get D is equal to six over tan 20, which is equal to 16.5 centimeters. All right, and now you can do the support questions on page 14, questions five through 18. Again, we're gonna look at the unknown land angles in our next lesson. So as you can hopefully have noticed, the solving of these are all the same. When you have all the numbers in place, you do the algebra and the math the same. You need to make sure you press the right button, but there's nothing very different. The key is how do you know which ratio to use? Do you use sine, cosine, tan? How do you know? That is the tricky part. So we're gonna walk through how you figure out which ones to use. Once we are finished this screen, I'd strongly suggest to screenshot it or save it in some way so that you can come back to this if you're uh, struggling to figure out which one to use. So the ratio is decided by the information that is in the question. So we have a triangle, a right angle triangle. We're gonna look at it and we're gonna figure out what information we have so that we know which angle to, which ratio to use. So the first step, as I just said, is that we wanna confirm that it's a right angle. This triangle that we have is a right angle triangle. We're happy, great. The second step is that we need to label the sides of our triangle. That's what we always did in all our examples. So we're gonna fire our reference angle, which is B, 36 degrees in this question. And then we see that the opposite side is 48 and the adjacent side is N. You can still label your hypotenuse, which is the side opposite the right angle or across from the right angle. It's fine to label it even though there's no information there. If that's helpful for you, go for it. And then we identify what information we know and what information we're solving for. So here we are solving for our adjacent side, that's our variable. We know our opposite side, that's our 48. And we know our reference angle, that is 36 degrees. So those are the three pieces of information that we have. We need to have two that we know and one that we don't know in order to be able to use this, uh, these ratios. Okay, so we figured that out. Now we choose our ratio. So how we do that is we say, okay, well, we have, we know our opposite. We're looking for adjacent. That means we look at our three ratios and we say, okay, which one has opposite and adjacent in it? Oh, tan. Tan has opposite and adjacent in it. So that means that I'm going to be using the tan B is equal to opposite over adjacent ratio in order to figure out what the side adjacent is. Because I don't know my hypotenuse, I can't use one of my sine or cosine. I don't have any information about that hypotenuse. So I can't use those ratios. I don't know anything. I have to use the ratio that I either, I know something and I don't know something because I have my reference angle. That is how I pick to use tan B. Okay, so again, I would screenshot it either in this moment when I have my final or uh, previously where I had to pick which of these three ratios to pick, you decide what's helpful for you. All right, so we have a quick moment to do just a quick practice question. So in each triangle, name the sides. So there are different ways of naming your sides. Um, that are different notations. There's three different ways. I will accept all of them. You don't have, there isn't one that is better than another. It's what makes most sense for you. So in this triangle, we have, uh, we're looking for this adjacent to angle R is what we are looking for. So our angle R is our reference angle. So our adjacent is here. So this side length is PR. You could call it PR because P are your and R are your vertices, and this is a line between P and R. And that is one way is that you label it based on the vertices. That's an okay way of doing it. 
Here, part B, you're asked for to find the hypotenuse. We know the hypotenuse is, off, is across from the right angle. So you could label this as HYP as your hypotenuse. That is another way that you could label your triangle. And I would accept that that is correct. That is what the hypotenuse is. Part three, or sorry, part C is opposite angle M. So angle M is our reference angle. So we're looking over here. So one, another notation for triangles is that we label sides that are opposite a vertice with the same letter, but the small letter opposed to the capital letter. So you could lab label this as little m, and I would also accept that as the right way to label the side. <clears throat> so these are three different ways that you can label sides. I would accept all of these. Of course, I would, they need to be the right, they need to be accurate, but these three different methods are all fine ways to label your sides. All right, so unfortunately, we don't have time to go through any more practice questions. Uh, in previous videos, there are some time, so you can go back and check out those from previous years. But calculating your angles are just using your calculator. So practice that, that's really important. And then going, stepping through the steps is based on the uh, the steps that we've gone through that we've done a bunch of examples on already. So just try that out. The only thing difference with the um, word problem is that you need to create what your triangle is. So that's the only thing different is that when you have a word problem, we won't go through this whole thing, but just to set it up is that we read the problem and we draw ourselves a picture. So a ladder is resting against a tree. So I'm going to draw a tree. It does not need to be beautiful. It doesn't really matter. You can just draw a straight line. That's fine. A ladder is resting against it. So the foot of the ladder is two meters from the base of the tree. So this is two meters. The ladder forms a 80, sorry, 48 degree angle with the ground. So the ladder and the ground here, this angle is 48 degrees. Understanding where that is, is really important. We assume that trees grow at 90 degrees into the ground. So this is where our 90 degree triangle is in our ground. And so now we have a right angle triangle. How far up the tree does the ladder reach? So that's asking us, what is this distance here? And so now we can figure out our information based off of the trigonometry that we've done. So word problems, you need to draw it to find your triangle. All right, that is all the time that we have for today. So let's quickly consolidate. With the trigonometry ratios, we looked at sine, cosine, and tangent. We remember that labeling the right angle triangle is essential. You have to do that first. You can use Sakatoa to help you remember, or you can use sine A of opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, or tangent is opposite over adjacent. These are both fine ways to remember. You just need to remember which is which. And then we learned how to solve for the unknown side today, and your calculator must be in degrees in order to do this. So hopefully you can identify the opposite adjacent sides as well as the hypotenuse in a triangle. And you can solve for an unknown side using trig ratios. Remember, we're going to look at angles in our next lesson. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out and connect with me. I'm here, all the usual ways to reach out, and I'm happy to support you however I can. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye-bye.